Man, what it is, boxing fans, man. Welcome to the channel. It's your boy, Banco Boxing. Uh, quick thing to remember, man. It's your first time on the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for all my boxing-related content, man. I try to keep it as unbiased as possible. Um, but today, I'll be giving my boxing roundup. I haven't did this in a while on a Monday. But I want to cover uh, Jacobs versus Chavez Jr., um, Tony Harrison versus Jamel Charlo. I want to cover uh, Errol Spence interview. And I think those are like the three main things. So, first things being first, man. Like I said again, welcome to the channel, man. But as you know, on Friday, the zone had the Chavez Jr. and Daniel Jacobs card, which is absolutely horrible. Well, the fight, I'll, 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 I'll slow down a little bit. Now, I'm a person, I will tell you, that doesn't care for rehydration classes. But for somebody as undisciplined as Chavez Jr., they should have gave him a, a hydration class, rehydration class, man. When I tell you that dude was every bit of uh, 185, 190 pounds. Like he was super big because I was wondering, to, I was wondering at first, kind of like why Danny Jacobs was kind of tentative in there with him, and he ended up saying after the fight, "Yeah, man, his punches were heavier and this and that." Like you, he was like, "You saw how big he was in there." He's like, "I can't even tell you how good I am at 168 right now because I wouldn't even fight no 168 pounder." But Chavez had some early success trying to press the action. I knew he only had one or two rounds in him. Um I think it was the fifth round to do quit in the corner. Jacobs uh, pretty much put combos on him, hit him with some uppercuts, and he quit. That's all it was, man. Chavez didn't want to fight. He came and quit. And it was disgusting. Uh, fans were even throwing stuff in the ring. That's how upset they were, man. You have to watch. Uh, if I could probably find some uh, footage that's not copyrighted, I'll try to put it in a video. To where Daniel Jacobs is actually ducking. And they have the uh, ring cards in front of him so he doesn't get hit with anything. They're not really mad at him. They're just throwing stuff at the ring. They're mad at Tyrese Jr. Wasting their time. You know what I'm saying? They had all those fights on the card. Um, just for that to happen. Oh, shout out to... Uh, let me backtrack some, man. Uh, we also had Maurice Hooker back in the ring. For the first time since his loss to uh, Jose Ramirez. I forgot when that fight happened. I think it was some months ago. But uh, Maurice Hooker, they fought a catch rate at 144. Got a first round KO. They said, He said he want to fight at 140. He want to get his belt back. I, I mean, I guess I don't like him at 140. Only because he just he's so tall and it seems like he don't have the same energy at 140. But we'll see. He got new nutritionist. He's been training with Bo Mack. We'll see. I I love to see Maurice Hooker versus maybe Regis Progray. Who knows? Adrian Broner said he's coming to 140. I mean, come back to 140. We'll see if he ever gives you know Maurice Hooker a shot. Maybe they fight for a belt. But to keep on talking about Chavez Jr. and Jacobs, it was just man. I can't use that word, but it was a show. It was an S show. <laughs> I'm gonna say that man. Keep it PG, but. Jacobs could be good at 168. I mean, I don't know how he does against Caleb Plant, Benavides. I haven't watched a lot of Callum Smith. And I got to look at who the next couple of guys at 168 are, how good he looks against those guys. So I have to see. Some people say, you know, Jacobs isn't that good. I say I'll get him. I, I've been ranked like as an above average fighter because he is a two-time champion at middleweight. We'll see if he wins a bit of 168. He has some scrap in him, um, but at times doesn't put it all on the line. So maybe that's because he's been knocked out before, which we've seen happen. But yeah, that's I mean that's pretty much what I have about Daniel Jacobs right now. It wasn't too telling. Now, with that being said, we want to talk about. I'm gonna talk about the uh, Errol Spence and Brian Kenny interview real quick. Just touch on that. Um, it was actually good to see Errol Spence. Everybody was saying he was okay. Uh, he was supposed to be on a, uh, at the Deontay Wilder fight. He was not present there, but he was at this fight, which was cool. 
Um, the issue is that Fox shouldn't have did it like that. Maybe they should have had, who's that guy? He know talks to Brian Custer or one of the fighters. Maybe somebody like that. Uh, even, you know, maybe they should have did a live thing where they had the Sean Porter and Abner Marius or something like that. Him talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Talk to people he's uh, he's talked to before and pre-screen the questions because anytime somebody asks you something, you got to say, my lawyer said I'm not supposed to talk about that. It's a bad look on TV. It's not like you're indicting yourself. You didn't say yes or no to anything. It's like pleading the fifth. And Brian Kenny, you know, did that. And people were upset. But like CJ Goodfellow said, why why are you being mad at Brian Kenny? If you didn't tell him he can't ask X, Y, Z, don't get mad at what he asks. You know what I'm saying? So you got to say, hey, don't ask me nothing about, don't ask him nothing about this. Just ask him how you feeling. Has he been... In there, here in the back, um, you know, even ask me, you know, you know how you, you know, uh, as far as recovery go with your jaw, or something like that, like is that fine or something like that. But don't ask him anything that could indict him, you know, in this case, because I'm I'm down here in uh, Texas or whatever, Frisco, and I could tell you that, you know, it's it's been real quiet about Errol Smith. Everybody's been kind of mum on it. Um, if you don't know what that word mom means, let me look it up for you real quick. Let me look it up for you real quick, man. Man, I hope y'all doing good today. But listen, the word mom means silent, not saving, saying a word. Say nothing, be silent. That's what mom means. So it's been real mom on Errol Spence. But having said all that, all in all, it's good. Errol Spence said he'll be back in May or June. Also, he has new teeth, and I think he hurt his jaw. I made a joke about him talking like Shannon Sharp now. Maybe it could be him adjusting to the new teeth, because teeth can, you know, having teeth in your tongue and all that stuff doesn't influence how you talk. I mean, I don't want him to rush back. At the end of the day, I want fighters to be safe. I don't want him going there getting hurt, trying to fight a tough fight. Coming back too fast. That's just, you know what I'm saying? Errol, don't don't be that brave. If Kevin Durant show anybody anything, it's that, you know, put yourself first. It's life after boxing. Just like it's life after basketball, life after football, life after soccer, like after hockey and et cetera. It's life after all that. Being a boxer doesn't define you. You got to do what's best for you and your family. Now, having said all that, I know the money's good. This also teach you something, you know, far as it's cool, you know, the personas or this or that, like all the cars and money and jewelry, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, when you get older, you're like, do I need all that? Like, what's the point of all this? Why am I buying? Who am I trying to impress? You know what I'm saying? Like, one thing we can learn from non-black people is most of the time they're not trying to impress nobody. We're the only people that try to impress everybody being flashy and stuff like that. For whatever reason, I have no clue. Now, I will segue into one of the most hyped up fights of the year. And it definitely did not dis disappoint. This could be a fight of the year candidate. And it might, it could possibly win just because of how it ended, man. Uh, as you all know, I went live for the Tony Harrison versus Jamel Charlo rematch. And let me tell you, it was a great fight. Uh, it was no filling out process, man. Tony did not use a lot of movement like he did in the first fight. Walked Charlo down a lot. Was boxing beautifully. Tony got knocked down three times. He got knocked down first time in the second round. He was not hurting him. More like off balance. From the bell ringing from the first round, Jamiro Charlo was on Seek and Destroy just throwing wild haymakers. And I thought Tony would have capitalized on that and caught him because he just was, you know, he. I, you could tell that uh, Tony had gotten Jamiro's head. You know what I'm saying? He was just fighting so undisciplined. And Tony, after getting knocked down the second round, was putting on the clinic with, uh, with Jamiro, man. He picked off most of his shots and he started going to the body on some good body work in there. And I can tell the fighters that can do everything just the base off even the way how they throw their body punch. It was a quick, Tony would throw a quick left hook to the body, come back up to the head real quick on Jamel. Jamel didn't have any answer for that. 
Tony was doubling up his jab, getting in. So I could tell something worked on. He did look better. He looked stronger. Um, that fight. Uh, but Jamel is supremely conditioned. He finally started having some success with his left hook. He was catching Tony with that left hook pretty much the whole night. And um, in the 11th round, man, he kept on throwing that hook. Tony tried to hook with a hooker and went down. And he was obviously hurt after that uh, that first knockdown in the 11th round. He went down again. Then after that, he got on the ropes and Jamel just started unleashing on him. And the ref stopped it. I do have an issue, though. I felt like after the second knockdown, when the third one started hitting, Tony was there. But the ref, you know, they got if they're taught to not hesitate to think, if they think you can't continue, they need to stop it. My issue was that that's why really good veteran fighters, when they get hurt, you know what I'm saying, they clinch on. I don't know why he didn't clinch. I don't know why he never clinched. If you would have clinched just a little bit, I want to say – even when Wilder was buzzed against Ortiz, he clinched on. Like, you got to clinch on. Do not be too brave for your own good. Like, Tony Harrison's dad told him in there, said, hey, why are you trying to sit around when you won the round? That's basically saying stop doing stuff to lose, stop doing stuff to get yourself in trouble. Uh, you also saw Tony in there being real cocky and it was a sign of fatigue, doing a little dances and stuff like that, mental fatigue. I don't know what he was trying to prove with that, but Jamel Charlo weathered the storm, and he let him get away with that too much. He should have started jumping on him. But he needs um, – I don't know who his strength and conditioning coach is, but um, I was going to say James Tony. Tony Harrison needs another strength and conditioning coach. That's going to help him with those mental issues, man. He needs to go train with, like, the Sean Porter and them in their uh, – Advanced facility, because Sean Porter is always in shape. You've never seen Sean Porter be out of shape. Never seen him be out of shape, man. Now, as we said, for that state of 154, they will be looking to make the uh, J-Rock and Jamel Charlo unification about next year. I prefer to see it like in the summertime. Who knows, man? Who who knows? But that's when I definitely... Pre- Prefer to see that fight, but knowing boxing, they'll make us wait for a good fight like that. But I hope it's, I hope it's on free TV. And if it's on pay per view, I ain't mad at it because that's pay per view fight. Uh, from what I saw from Jamel Charlo, though, besides that punch, if he didn't have some more power, he would have lost that fight. He would have lost that fight. He don't do good with boxers, and he gonna possibly have to bring a co trainer in with Derrick James or something because. Either he's not listening to him, but him fighting like that 154 and 160, that's not going to cut it. He's going to mess around and get knocked out. He's fighting some bigger guys. Like, mind you, Tony Harrison's, what, 6'6", six 6'1"? Six he's, he's a bigger guy. He's actually taller than uh, Charlo. Charlo might be, like, a little more stockier. But going up to 160, you got some bigger guys up there, like Andrade and um, not Billy Joe. I mean, Canelo's not that big. Even Triple G, Dervinchenko. But, yeah, J-Rock is going to give Charlo fits. And I'm not going to lie. Well, no, no, that's a 154. I was going to say Dervinchenko, but he's at 160. J-Rock's going to give him fits because he can do everything that um, her could do and a little bit more. I mean, Tony Harrison can do. And he took out the stamina warrior at 154, Jared Hurd. And that was probably the biggest 154-pounder in the division. And J-Rock ain't no small dude either. Yeah, he lost to the older brother, Jamal. But Jamel is not Jamal. J-Rock is ready for that. He'll come in supreme uh, shape. The anomaly is Swift Jared Hurd. How is he going to look in this uh, tune-up in in January 25th? So I can um, basically assess... If he's going to get a shot at whoever wins all the belts, that's something to look out for. Guys, also look out for Erickson Lubin, putting his name back in the mix. I think he's one more big fight away at 154 beside, before fighting one of those guys. And I'm going to tell everybody right now, on notice, what you saw when Lubin moved on too fast and fought Jamel Charlo, they did that, they did that on purpose, though. But if you see that again, 
that fight ain't going to be so easy. I'm telling you, go back and watch Lubin since he got with Kevin Cunningham. The young man is different. That's all I'm going to say. But, hey, guys, that's going to wrap up my boxing roundup. I'm going to work. Uh, I'm going to plan to probably do some more videos and put them out this uh, holiday week, man. So maybe you guys could be on the channel, have something to watch this week, man, while you're at home with your families, man. I want y'all to enjoy your families. Enjoy these days, man, because every day is in promise. But, hey, you know what it is, man. It's your boy Banco Boxing, man. Appreciate you if you made it this far in the video. Check out some of my playlists and my videos. And make sure you share it on your social media. It's Banco Boxing, and I'm out.